We're going to talk now about quadratics. You probably won't believe me, but quadratics are arguably one of the most important things you will learn in secondary school. Now in the current chapter we are doing at the moment, algebra, quadratics are very important. But as we go on, you will find that you need them in future chapters, such as statistics, trigonometry, coordinate geometry, functions and graphs, complex numbers, and differentiation. Now when you go into senior cycle and take up subjects such as physics or chemistry or applied maths, you will find that quadratics play a big part in them also. And that's just in school. So in the real world, technologies such as mobile phones or computers or most other types of electronics wouldn't be possible without quadratics. And other things like computer co programming, economics, satellite positioning, naval navigation and many many other things all wouldn't be possible or relate somehow back to quadratics. So in previous sections of this chapter we learned how to factorize certain expressions. And that's exactly what we're going to do to quadratics as well. Before we do that, let's just look back over a different type of factorizing that we've already covered, called factorizing by grouping. Now this expression should look familiar to you, and to factorize it, what we do is we take out what's common from the first two numbers, which in this case is 7y, and then we take out what's common from the second two numbers, which in this case is 2a. And we know at this stage that we're right, because what's left in both brackets is the exact same. So to finish off, we then put both brackets back together. Now I know we've already covered this, but it is also a very important part of factorising quadratics as well. So back to quadratics. Now the first thing we'll do is figure out what a quadratic actually looks like. So here is an example of a quadratic expression. As is this, and this, and this. Now what do we notice about these expressions? Well each expression has an x squared, an x, and a number. And what exactly are we trying to do with these quadratics? Well, like other types of factorizing, we want to turn this into this. Okay, so here we go. Now to factorize this quadratic, we must follow four simple steps. The first step is finding our guide number. We get this by multiplying the first number by the last number. So in this case, it's 24. In step two, we then get the factors of 24 i.e. the numbers that multiply to give you 24. So it's 1 by 24, 2 by 12, 3 by 8, and 4 by 6. Now, here's the good part. Take a look at the middle number in the expression, 11. Now which of these sets of factors will add to give you 11? So for example, 1 plus 24 is 25, so that's no good. 2 plus 12 is 14, so that's out. But look at 3 plus 8. That will give you 11. So step 3 is the most important step. We are now going to take the original expression, except we are going to replace 11x with 3x plus 8x. To finish off in step 4 we simply factorize the new expression by grouping, which we already know how to do. Now, don't expect to be able to do this straight away just from listening to me talking. Take some time to practice on these steps on similar expressions, like this, and this, and th Oh wait, no, what's different with this one? Okay, so there's a minus there before the middle number. But don't panic just yet. Let's follow the steps again and see if we can factorize this one. So, step one, again, you find the guide number. And again, we list out the factors of this guide number in step two. Now, we want the set of factors that will add to give you the middle number. Well. Clearly 6 and 2 will add to give you 8, but the middle number in this case is a minus. So how can we get them to add up to minus 8? Well, what if we change them to minus 6 and minus 2? That will work. And if you remember your rules of signs, if we multiply minus 6 by minus 2, that will give you plus 12. So after that, follow the exact same steps and then you're done. Now, as I was saying, to get good at factorizing quadratics, you have to practice them a lot. 
So try factorizing ones like these, and this, and that. Oh wait, again, now we have a problem here. What's different here? So this time the third number is a minus, and that's going to make a bit of a difference as well. Now, I'm pretty tired of talking here, so I'm going to let you solve this problem yourself. Now don't worry, I'll give you a bit of help. So you should have a good understanding of the steps now at this stage, especially if you took some time to practice. So use your newfound knowledge to help you solve this problem all on your own. I'll give you one or two hints, alright. So in step one, as usual, we get the guide number by multiplying the first number by the last number. But in this case, the last number is a minus 3. So our guide number will be a minus 15. Now think back to your rules of science. When you're looking for your factors, what two numbers will multiply to give you a minus 15? So, think about that, and don't worry if you can't figure it out. The solution is given in the exercise of blow, as is the solution of all the other quadratics that I mentioned so far. So good luck with that, and happy factorizing.